What's up guys, today we have a special treat for you. We've got an exclusive look at the VCI 400. We've got a prototype of this device in the office and we've got the chance to check it out, inspect the hardware. Uh, we're not gonna do a full review right now, but we are gonna show you a quick look at how the thing works. Uh, and how we think it's built. So we actually had the uh, Vestax guys in the office yesterday, uh, Toshi, the CEO, and a bunch of other guys who helped build this product. And they said to me, you know, there's a lot of four deck controllers out there on the market. Um, it's not a new concept. And they wanted to make one that was better than the rest in terms of quality. They wanted to make one that was really the best. Uh, it's pretty expensive. It's $9.99 US. Um, it's going to be available sometime next year. Early spring is what they're saying, uh, possibly in Europe a little bit earlier. But I'm happy to report that it is actually a really, really good quality controller. Um, You've got a nice solid metal chassis here with some really cool elements on the side. You've got a nice strong back plate here. This plate you'll notice is actually removable. That's so that you can replace all of the cross faders and the line faders with high quality faders or should something break, you can easily replace them so you don't have to throw away the whole device. You'll notice that um, all the elements here are metal, really nice strong faceplate. And of course these big chunky um, screws are, you know, give you some sense of confidence and build. Overall, the style is really cool. It's got this nice black, um, gray look to it, and I think the look of the unit is really, really nice. It just kind of makes you feel good. The um, black jog wheels are there now, standard uh, design with the tightening center, so you can kind of adjust the tension to make it tighter or looser. And you've got two zones. This is the non-touch zone for pitch bends, and this is, of course, the scratch zone. You can switch between decks B and D, or on the other side between C and A, and then you've got full four decks control. So, you know, obviously pretty standard stuff here. What's different and what's special? You've got uh, four performance cues at the bottom, and these have three different modes. There's a little mode switch here on the front. And as I switch through, it should be switching through different colors of LEDs. Um, and of course, you can map these to whatever you want. We'll probably map them to cue points and instant effects and other things. Then right above the jog wheel, you've got this cool matrix. Now, this is a tack switch. It's sort of a little bit of a stiffer response, but plays pretty well. Here, we could put a lot of instant press effects, maybe some, uh, some loop triggers, different things. I'm really fun mapping this zone. Um, here, you've got the effects section. This is an endless encoder with a push state and then four buttons, really designed for tractor effects and four values here. Then you've got uh, ideally a switchable buttons to switch between the different effects and a nice full range tempo pitch fader here. Moving over to the filter section, this is a good example of how the controller gives you a sense of really good quality build. We've got big chunky metal filter knobs and you'll notice that right here, the knobs are actually a metal Alps knob, and it's mounted uh, using washers directly to the chassis. So this is a really strong way of building a controller. You'll notice that many controllers today will actually have plastic knobs, and they'll just kind of come straight through the top sheet. So if you're really cranking on things, you could get a lot of side wobble. And this is actually the best way to build it, so it's really strong and stable. It's more expensive, um, but it is the stronger way to do things. And of course, they're nice and big and fat. Cool feature I haven't seen anywhere else. It shows you when the filter is on. Oftentimes, you won't realize it, but it's slightly off of center, so your song sounds weird. Here, I can clearly know, oh, there, the filter is off. Full bands EQs. One interesting choice they made was putting the sync and the load buttons right next to the browse. At first, I was a little bit weirded out by that. Usually, we like to see the sync down by pause and play. But the idea here is that you look for a song, hit load, and then sync it up with the track, go down and play it from here. So if we look on the back of the unit, you'll notice you've got high quality Neutrik mic connectors. These will accept a quarter inch plug or a, a, an XLR plug, so that's really good, nice and flexible. One area that uh, Vestax has really improved this controller is they've actually put a high quality sound card in here. You've got two inputs and then master output, including XLR outs. Um, but one thing that Toshi told me and that the Vestax team told me they did was they went and uh, picked a brand new sound card USB interface from scratch with uh, super, super high quality outputs and full 96K 24-bit um, uh, 
drivers. So supposedly, we haven't been able to test it, this thing is going to sound amazing and a lot better than the all-in-one VCI units before it. So overall, I got to say, um, I'm pretty stoked on this controller. It looks like we might be doing an Ian Golden edition of it as well with the full mappings. Of course, lots of crazy controllers and stuff taken over from the VCI 100 days um, in this nice big body. So look out for that next year. If you're interested in that product, uh, go to our website, djtechtools.com, sign up, and we'll shoot you an email when that's in the works. Um, and we're really excited to finally get the actual software in and, and, and really test this thing and do the full review in a, in a couple of months. But just from first impressions, I gotta say, we're, we're all here at the office really impressed um, and, and looking pretty good for the new Vestax VCI 400.